Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everyone this morning. God is good. Praise the Lord. God is good. Shalom. Thank you for another time and another opportunity to come before his throne. And to bless you with the word of God. God has been so good. I've been sitting back here listening to my brother with uh, some awesome praise and worship. You know, it's one thing when you have choirs recorded and you know people have done all kinds of things but it's another thing when it comes from the heart amen somebody who has been through things and can relate to it in the form of worship and i'm sure many of us i will say many of us have been through some pretty traumatic things in our lives and god has brought us through amen. one of the reasons why we are here today is to honor him to praise him to glorify him because of the things he has done and the things that he is still doing for us. God is still blessing us. God is still uh, uh, showering down things upon us. Sometimes uh, we look for the grandiose, I say, those things that are so big, you know, we can ooh hey, but you know, a lot of times it's just those small blessings. Those small things that we take for granted, we don't look on them as being things that God has done, or God is doing, uh, because we're so looking for such magnanimous things. And I thank God for even those small things. Some things such as me just taking my next breath. Yeah. It's not promised to you, but yeah. God has given it to you. And the more we learn how to honor him and praise him and worship him for everything then we are on our road to learning how to operate in his fullness and trusting him and in blessing him we want to continue to go forward uh, with the power of trust revisit it we are revisiting this we've done we've, we've been through this series before but i'm a firm believer uh, that as we continue to grow in god we need to revisit things and keep us on the right track. It's easy to get off focus. It's easy to get off track. It's easy to, you know, uh, uh, start down a, a, a road and before you know it, you found detours. Yeah. You've run out of gas or something has come and blocked your path. It kind of throws you off your game. And sometimes you have to go back and Revisit, how did you make it through before? What did God do for you in the past? Don't think he won't do it again because he will. This is the God that we serve. I always say he's not a one-time God. Amen. He's a God that continues to do and bless us and show us the things we need to do to grow stronger. So this is the power of trust, part five. I don't know about you, but man. That takes a lot of trust. This man is hanging by his legs and about to try to catch somebody. Oops. Come on, Quan, would you jump out like that? <laughs> would you trust me to catch you? Wow. Say, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> you know I love you, brother, and I'm sure you love me too, but Quan's like, nah, man, I ain't, I ain't trusting you to catch me like that. That is not happening. If I see you hang upside down on a rope like that, I would trust you. You would trust me. See, there you go. See, quad's still like But you got to hang it. upside down on the rope. I got to see, that's the problem. I got to hang upside down like that. You know, I'm putting trust in my legs. You know what I'm saying? But we have to learn how to do this. So we have to deal with faith versus trust. Too many people are believing it's the same thing. And it's really not. There are, there are differences in faith and trust trust. So what are the differences? Well, faith is confidence. It is the belief that is not based on proof. You can't prove it, but you believe it. You understand that there's no way that you can possibly deduce it out, so therefore you have to accept it as being the reality. That's God. You can't prove God. You just know he is. Amen. You have faith that he is going to be there when you need him. Go beyond. He's going to be there when you think you don't need him. Amen. He's always going to 
be there. He said in his word, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Too many times we think God has left. God is gone. God is nowhere in there around. That's why we act as foolishly as we do. Because <laughs> we don't think he sees us. We don't, we don't even put him into our minds mm -hmm. as him being anywhere in our atmosphere. Yeah. And he's right there with you. Yeah. No matter what you do, no matter what mm -hmm. you've done. He said it in his word. But trust is commitment. It is firm belief in the reality, the reliability, the reliability, truth, and ability of something or someone. In essence, trust is faith in action. Because trust requires action. It requires you to do something. It requires you to step out with your faith making sure that what you're believing in, making sure that what you are having faith God for will come to pass because you put yourself in the position to use the faith that you are asking God for. Oh, we always, oh Lord, I need more faith. Lord, I need more faith. Okay, he's going to give you more. He, he, actually, he's not going to give you no more faith. He's already said he's given to every man a measure of faith. You have all the faith you need. What you need to do is start trusting him by putting that faith into action. You say you, you have faith in him? Prove it. Do something. That's going to cause your faith to be utilized mm -hmm. so that when you come through, you can look back and say, yeah, that's God. Yeah, I trust him. Yeah, I put my life into his hands and I know that he's going to do for me what he needs to do. Psalms 28 verse 7 says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song, I will praise him. There's things I'm going to do because I know my heart is trusted in him. Yep. <clears throat> See, David's giving you these things because he had to put his whole life in God's hands. He had enemies on this side that was coming against him. He had Saul on this side that was coming against him. He had so many oppositions, things that were coming against him, that most of us would probably say, I ain't doing that. I'm not going that route. Why do I want to put myself in this position knowing that I've got everybody that's against me? But David had to know where his help came from. Therefore, he could put his trust in God, knowing that I'm going to go forward. I'm going to defeat my enemies. I'm going to stand and be what you want me to be. Even though he sinned, even though there were things that David did that was not according to God's law, not according to God's desires, David still had that heart for God to put his trust in God's hands. Now, you go up against the lion. You go up against the bear. You go up against the giant. Let's see what you do. Are you going on your own strength or are you going on the strength of God in whom you put your trust in. So we're going to go back and do the seven daily steps to learn to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Our anchor scripture is Proverbs in the third chapter. Because we know that Solomon was telling you that you got to learn how to trust in God. Not with just part of your heart. Not with just when things seem right or when things you know, are going right. You got to learn how to trust God in every situation and with every part of your being. So last week we talked about don't depend on you. You can't depend upon yourself. You think you know whether everything is right. You think you know the best way to do things. You can't depend upon yourself. Situations change. Circumstances change change. And if you want to try to do the same thing that you did last week and try to do it this week, depending upon your thought, your situation has changed. Time has changed. Mm -hmm. Circumstances has changed. And if you want to just depend upon you, I guarantee you, you're not going to have the great type of uh, outcome that you want to have. So don't depend upon you. Depend upon God. Then we talked about you have to learn to cry out to God. You gotta talk to him. You've got to understand and realize 
that you got to verbalize yourself to the Lord. You can't say God. You got to talk God. You know, a lot of times I know we do prayer, and prayer sometimes is that quiet. Is, yeah, but sometimes you got to call. We had a, a wonderful prayer session this past month. We have, I know you guys know that we're on a 31 day a prayer for this church, Word for Life Worship Center. Every Monday between 6.30 and 7, as a church, mm -hmm. we should be coming together wherever you are. You don't have to come here, but wherever you are, that's a 30-minute window that each and every one of us, as a corporate church, need to take some time and still away and pray that God will do and move mightily with this ministry. Because it's not ours. It's God's. Amen. We want him to operate and work so that we can reach the world for Christ. And Michelle and I, man, I'll tell you what, it's rocking. We were calling out to God. There wasn't no quiet, nothing. Lord, we need you. Father, we need you. We desire your presence. We need your help. We need you to intercede. We know that there are forces that are trying to destroy us, but we know that you are with us because your word has told us that greater is he that's where? In me. In me than he that's in the world. So I don't worry about who's trying to come against. I don't care about the word that's trying to be put out. That means nothing because I know that since God is the one that's leading this ship, he's going to take it where he needs it to go. Amen. We're going to do exactly what God says to do. So today we're going to go on into run from evil. Not walk from evil. You got to run from evil. So much in this world can be cluttered up with our relationship with God. See now John the writer of the fourth gospel described these types of things that clutter up our relationship with God as the desires of the flesh the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. 1 John 2.16 For everything that is in the world does not come from the Father. The desires of the flesh and the things of our eyes see and want, and the pride of this life come from the Lord. I mean, come from the world. This is what happens. It comes from the world. The world wants you to have so much desire in the things of the world than the things of God. And we subject ourselves to that. We take too much time worrying about what's going on in the world. We take too much time trying to decipher how we want things to be in our lives instead of taking the opportunity and the time to give ourselves to God. We lust with our eyes. There's so many things we see, so many things we want that have nothing to do with God. It's all about our selfish desires. God wants you to have good things. Trust me, don't take this wrong. God wants you to be blessed. God wants you to live a prosperous life. But that prosperity is not just for you. Somebody just won $700 million. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bringing home $330 million at the time. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't care how long you live, you ain't never going to spend $330 million. Oh, yes, you can. And live right. No and be truly happy. See, it's not for you. It's for you to learn how to bless others. For you to learn how to make sure God's kingdom is represented high on the earth by God's blessings and what he's desired for you to do with what he puts into your hands. We have to learn how to be good stewards over what God has blessed us with. I'm not telling you to go out here and buy a lottery ticket. I ain't telling you to go out here and don't buy a lottery ticket. That's, only, that's between you and God. But I'm a firm believer that if you're going to buy one, you better make sure God gave you the numbers. Amen. You're guaranteed to win. See, that's not gambling. 
God gives you the numbers and you win. That's not a gamble. That's a sure thing. thing. Amen. I'm saying that's a, I'm saying that as a fact. But when you just run and try to do like they do in Vegas, <laughs> baby needs a new pair of shoes. And that's a gamble. God is not in the gamble. Because that's not about faith and trust. It's all about you wanting to do what you want to do. And then the pride in our lives. Look at what I did. Look at my accomplishments. I did this. I pulled myself up by my own bootstraps. You haven't done anything. I don't care what CEO, president of what company, what leader of what nation has ever gotten in that position because somebody else has helped them get where they are. Amen. Nobody's done anything on their own. And guarantee, if God wasn't the one who made it happen, it wasn't going to happen anyway. We talk about our leadership of this country. How could this happen? Because God wanted it. Because God chose it for such a time as this. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen next week. You don't know if there's going to be a next month. Amen. So you got to live for now. And I say it all the time. Jesus Christ is coming back. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back soon. But he ain't here yet. So since he's not here yet, you got to work today. You've got to do things today that are going to help to upbuild his kingdom until he comes. He didn't tell you to be perfect. He told you to strive for perfection. He didn't tell you that you had to have everything done, but you need to be found working. Not sitting back just waiting for things to happen. you got to be busy doing something. And one of the things you've got to do is run from evil. So in other words, our blessings can easily become our stumbling blocks when we think of them as what we deserve or what we need to be happy. Too many of us are looking at the things we think we need to make us happy. You know, if I only had that, that new car, I'd be happy. If I only had that new house, I'd be happy. You know, if I had, you know, these diamond rings, I'd be happy. You know, if I had all this money, I'd be happy. No, it's got nothing to do with it. See, those things become your stumbling blocks. Instead of the things that help you to build yourself. So instead, life works best when we remember that the true source of our blessing, God. And focus on the things that please Him. That's the true source of your blessings, it is God. It's not the things that you want, not the things that glitter. Listen, my mama used to always say, all the glitters ain't gold. And even though the grass may seem greener, on the other side, weeds are green. I've seen them, I've had them in my yard. Yeah. It took me a long time to get a bunch of them out of here. They green. It's good from a distance. It's good from afar. But so and I, we went to um, Amish country on Friday. And I tell you what, I we it was the first time I had ever been here up in Holmes County. And my goodness gracious, I don't think I've ever seen, outside of going up when we go down to Tennessee, I see the mountains, I don't think I've ever seen anything as beautiful as those rolling hills and the farms and the different colors and nature. And it was just absolutely beautiful. It was breathtaking. And we drive and we hit the hills and the valleys. It was just absolutely beautiful. And then you come back to the city and you go, Ugh. how do people live like this? <laughs> but, I, but, but we stopped by a place and then we went to a thrift store and you know, all Amish. Wonderful. And Michelle speaking to the woman behind the, the counter and the woman had to turn around and say well you know everything that looks this way ain't this way she had her armor stuff on in essence what she was saying well, what you think you see isn't always the way it is Amen. <laughs> and she wasn't smiling she was not smiling <coughs> and he, that goes to tell you that even in those areas that we think is so peaceful and so serene the enemy is still busy even in those areas there 
trying to bring destruction, <coughs> trying to change, trying to <coughs> put in harm and hurt so that people cannot worship God the way that they want to do. So if it's just because it looks great, doesn't mean it's better the way you are. Yeah? Proverbs 3 and 7, when it talks about referee, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Fear the Lord, have reverence in the Lord, acknowledge the Lord, and depart from evil. You see the word says depart from evil? Guess what? You have the power to leave evil. Trust me. Listen, I want you to get this firmly in your mind. The devil did not make you do it. Those of you that can remember Flip Wilson back in the day. The devil did not make you do it. You did it on your own. So you have the ability to depart from evil. When you acknowledge God, when you fear God, when you have reverence of God, when you allow God to have that eminence in your life, you have the power to leave evil alone. Amen. We invite evil in. We open up the door for evil. We welcome him right on and come on. It's all right. And that's not what God is expecting. 2 Timothy 2.22 says, Run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Instead, pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. See, we have to sometimes separate ourselves from people that have no intentions of doing us any good. We have to surround ourselves with companions or surround ourselves with like-minded people that want the same thing that we do. A righteous relationship with God. Does that mean you don't have nothing else to do with the world? No, absolutely. That's not what it says. Because you have to go out into the world and try to win the world. But when it comes to some of your relationships, when it comes to being able to have companions, bros, sis, you need to make sure that you have put in your life those that have a same like-mindedness to make sure that you are walking with God together. My Bible tells me where two or three are gathered together in my name, meaning you're together in his name. He's promised to be in the midst of it. That don't mean just being in a house anywhere, but in all of your relationship with the people that you are with. When you are with God in his name, when you're with each other in the name of Jesus, knowing that you are doing what God is expecting you to do, having love for one another, talking with one another, encouraging one another, lifting one another up, interceding for one another. God has promised he's going to be in the midst and he's going to see you through and he's going to bless you. Yeah, you can run from evil. You don't have time for evil. There's no space for evil. Now, is it easy? Not at all. See, fleeing from evil desires that pull on us means you got to spend a lot more time crying out to God, talking being in his presence, reading his word, sharing your testimony, blessing others, hearing what others are saying, nurturing yourselves so that you have the ability to help others. Michelle and I, I'm telling you recently, Michelle and I have been <sighs> really going through some things with some people that we know. We, 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 we have encountered some very hurting people recently. I mean, hurting people. And we're, we're, sometimes it pulls on us. But we have to make sure that we are in a place in a position where we can offer help to these people. Show them God's love. Give them a word of compassion. Give them a word of strength. Give them a word that's going to help change their situation and change their circumstance. Show them the righteousness of God. Show them the God that lives in us. Share our experiences. There's things that we've been through that we don't mind telling you about. 
Because you need to know, if God can bring us through, he can bring you through. Amen. If he was in the midst of our situation and solved our problem, he can do the same for you. We don't have a problem with that. We are, we're trying to be as transparent as we can be. We ain't got nothing to hide. God is good. All the time. And he's continually working in us to improve us. So if he's doing that with us, guess what he's going to do with you? Sometimes the only way to live our life that God wants us to live is by separating ourselves from the bad influences that keep dragging us down. <laughs> right there it is. You got the evil on one side, you got the good on the other. How many of us, how many of you have ever been in this situation? <laughs> We've really had tugging and pulling. You got to talk to yourself. You know good and well to do right, but you got that evil tongue, you man. Go ahead and do it. This is a commercial out right now that I, I drunk driver. the drug driver. Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen it, I think to me it's a wonderful, wonderful okay. commercial. This guy's coming into the bathroom. I guess he's at a concert, and he knows he's had too much to drink. He stands in front of the way, the, the, the war space, and he looks up in the mirror. It's his own reflection, but his reflection is a guy who's kept. And his hair is all messed up and disheveled, and he knows he's drunk. But his reflection is trying to tell him, go ahead, you're a good driver. You're good, go ahead, it's all right. Get behind that wheel. You know what to do. And he's like, just do it! And the guy comes to himself and realizes you got evil trying to tell him to go out here and kill somebody. Mm -hmm. Throws the keys down and walks out. I think it's a me, it's a wonderful yeah. commercial. Because yeah. that's a struggle of good and evil. I, I don't know about you, but there's been times when I was slightly inebriated. Only slightly? I know, but well, that's just uh, <laughs> I'm trying to be facetious a little bit here. I, I know. Nah, I mean. I know. Yeah, Been there. <laughs> Been there. And I just knew I was going to drive home. Mm -hmm. I'm good. I make it. And my wife had to say, uh -huh. I took them keys. They wouldn't let me go nowhere. And there's been those times when I was by myself and I woke up in my driveway and don't know how I got there. Amen. I'm telling you. I'm, Amen. I'm, I'm driveway. I mean, I'm, I woke up in the driveway and I knew I was almost on the other side of town and I'm trying to figure out how did I make it home. Amen. It wasn't nothing but the grace of God. Amen. Yep. And I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, next morning I'm looking on the news. Did I hit anybody? Mm -hmm. yeah. I, to, I had to get out and go look at my car. Did I hit anything? Right. You know, because this is what God will do for you, even when you don't do for yourself, even in your own stupidity. Mm -hmm. You fall prey to this. You gotta learn how to run from evil. And we know what's evil. Mm -hmm. We know what is good. We've got to do that. Our Creator promises to honor our commitment to Him when we submit to God and shun evil. James 4 and 7. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Most people like this part. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Mm -hmm. They don't want to understand that you can't do that if you're not submitted to God. Amen. If you haven't given yourself to God, if you have not let him have that preeminence in your life, if you have not listened to his word and followed his directions, you can try to resist the devil all you want. All he's going to do is laugh at you. And keep pouring it on even more and more and more until he wins. When we pursue him, we find life. We find abundant life. Running from evil and pursuing God doesn't come naturally to most of us. Instead, it means we have to make a serious change in our lives. So what does that change? Oh, Proverbs 3 and 8, I'm sorry, let me go back. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. You got sickness in your body? You better learn to submit to God. This is made a promise to you. We need to be healthy in order to do the work God is wanting us to Amen. do. We're relying. I hear you, Lord. Yeah, that's good. 
we are relying too much on what the doctor says and not more on what God says. Doctor's giving you a diagnosis. I'm not telling you to ignore that diagnosis. He's found something in you. Fine. Now what you gonna do about it? You gonna put your trust in every pill he shoves down you to put down your throat? Every shot he's telling you to take? Every drip or drop of medicine he's telling you to put in your mouth? Or you gonna really learn how to trust God and fight that? Now if God's telling you to do it, follow the directions of the doctor. Because he knows your level of faith. But sometime or another, you're gonna to have to start weaning yourself off of what the doctor says and start doing what God says. God is telling us how to eat. God's telling us how to walk. He's telling us exercise we need to take. Doing them push aways instead of push ups. You know what push aways are. I'm done. Yep. That table. <laughs> hey, I'm just telling like it is. We want to have that easy fix from the doctor, but we don't want to do what God has already put in the earth to tell us what to do and how to live. Push aways. When we start doing that, watch your life change. Submit to God. Therefore, you can resist the temptations of the devil for you to continue to do what everybody else is doing, following what everybody else say, looking up every remedy you can find on YouTube. Stop, start, when you don't do what God says to do. It's in his work. It's right there. When you do it, there's a promise that you will live healthy and blessed. So we got to learn how to put God first in our lives. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. See, we got to learn how to give. When something good happens, we want to congratulate ourselves with a reward. Oh, I didn't, yeah, man, let me go out and buy this. Let me go out and buy that. I didn't, let me pat myself on the back. Or, you know, the big thing is, you know, I, I lost four pounds. So now you go out and get a tub of ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Come on. <laughs> or that big slice of triple layer chocolate cake, death by chocolate. Pizza. Literally. Pizza, it's got everything on it but the kitchen sink. Oh, but you done lost a few pounds. So now you got to celebrate. I deserve it. I deserve it. <laughs> And put yourself right back in the same cardiac condition you hey, were in. Hey, hey. <laughs> when something bad happens, though, we want to always blame somebody else for what happens. Mm -hmm. We want to console ourselves. Oh, woe is me. Pity me. Woe is me. In other words, we make ourselves a me centric type of attitude. It's all about me. But when it comes to money, the struggle is even harder. Mm -hmm. Solomon, who had a whole bunch of wealth, knew that money did not belong to him. It belonged to God. Mm -hmm. And he said it again, Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. Honor the Lord by giving him the first part of all your income. And he will fill your barns with wheat and barley and overflow your wine vats with the finest wines. I'm, you got three hundred and thirty million dollars. You better give. You better give three hundred and at least twenty-five million dollars away. Not you crazy. <laughs> well, you had seven hundred million first. I'm telling you. Listen. God wants you to understand that you cannot outgive Him. What you have are called seed. And when you seed, the harvest from the seed is always greater than the seed. Amen. Watch God turn what you give him, multiply it back exponentially. You can't count that. See, we want to hoard, we want to keep things to ourselves and not realize that God has given us opportunity to bless somebody else's life. We as a church, we as a church, we are, are givers. We have a couple of places that we give to, we can't even find another one. We want to 
going to be able to seed into the lives of people who are in need and bless them so that they can be blessings to others. We understand and realize that when we give, God is obligated to give back. How do you know that? Matthew 6.33 says, First seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What will be added unto you? Everything you seek after. Everything you need in your life. God has made us a promise. Right? Again, look at the bees out here. When you guys leave, and trust me, they're not going to mess with you. I'm going to answer the bees. These bees ain't thinking about you. They have a job to do. Yeah. But if you take the time and really look at the bees that are out here in front of our yard, they are, they are hard at work gathering what God's brought up for them to be prepared for the weather. God's taking care of all these different species of bees. It's a bee. Who are you? If God will bless them, don't you think he won't take care of you? Yeah. Oh, ye of little faith. If we can trust God with the first of our wealth, we're truly showing how much we depend on Him. Giving is very essential. We find this in Malachi, the third chapter, verses 8 through 10. It says, Well, anyone rob God, yet you are robbing me. But you say, This is God saying, Yet you are robbing me. But you say, How are we robbing you? He says, In your tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse. You are cursed with a curse. You are cursed. Man, God tells you you cursed. That's, that's, that's no right. joke. Yeah. Because you are robbing me. The whole nation of you. I believe this is happening to our nation. We have so many homeless folk out here. We have, we, we've forgotten our veterans. There are those who have done great works and now they're sitting up here don't have nothing. nothing. And we forget them as a nation. We put our elderly in a home and forget about them. Don't you know that is your wisdom mm -hmm. that you are putting away and you don't want to listen? We're destroying ourselves mm -hmm. because we don't care. We don't learn how to give. We're robbing God. He says, bring the full tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. And thus put me to the test. Put me to the test. Try me out, says the Lord of hosts. See if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you an overflowing blessing. God wants you to prove him. God wants you to test him. God wants you to try him by trusting him with your finances. Who said, no, I can't afford to give. No, honey, you cannot afford to give. What about my bills? What about your bills? Check out my bees. My God makes sure every last one of those bees get all the nectar they can get because every day there's more flowers and more flowers and more flowers and more flowers that keep on coming up. And these flowers will be here through our, almost through most of October. Mm -hmm. They'll come up until the first parts of August. They'll be here through October. And God's going to make sure that when all other flowers are gone, these are still going to be here enough for them for God to take care of them. Honey, God will take care of you. But you got to learn to trust Him. I, I'm putting your actions, putting your trust where your mouth is. Mm -hmm. Luke 6 and 38, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. You want to be stingy? Guess what you're going to get? Stingy. You want to be a good giver and give much? God's made a promise. He's going to give it back to you. So much so that it's going to be pressed down. You ever had to, I guess I think I told you once before, I had, we had something going on here when the kids were little and my trash can was full and I had much more trash to get in there. I think I picked up Marshall, who was one of the bigger of the kids. I stuck him in the trash can. I chip up and down. 
<laughs> yeah. Just turn up and down. I got we, we got to we got you gotta make some room. We're gonna press this down in here, boy. And he was having a ball. He thought it was fun. He didn't know I had a purpose. Ah, I need to jump up and down in the trash can. Ooh. Yeah, buddy, keep on jumping. I need more room. This is what he's promised to do. He says it's gonna be pressed down, shaken together, and running over. You're gonna use, you're not gonna be able to out use everything God wants to give and give to you when you give. Then 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 7 says, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Man, we saw cornfield after cornfield after cornfield after cornfield. I, don't, I ain't never seen that much corn. They sowed bountifully. Then with cornfield in, the soybean bean fields took over. And there were soybeans for days and days and days. And then we got to the apple orchards, and as far as you can see, it was all kinds of apples. See, they did not believe in putting down sparingly. They put down such a bounty that what they received back was enough to feed multitudes. And that's what God wants to do for you. You kind of learn how to sow much. So handing over the first part of your paycheck or fighting over the first part of your increase, it does take a huge amount of faith and a huge amount of trust. But doing so makes you God-centric. Mm -hmm. No longer are you me-centric. Yeah. Now you are God-centric. Mm -hmm. You're doing what God is telling you to do so that you can be blessed to be a blessing to others. And watch God take what you get and bless you with it because it's given with a true heart. I've got my change purse back in my car now. I'm trying to keep all kinds of money in there so that when I see somebody holding up a sign, here, I give you, I'm gonna give to you. I don't care what you do with it. Amen. That dollar ain't gonna change your life, but it sure will change mine. Because I'm giving it out of what I have to make sure that I meet some need for somebody. God wants us, he's looking at you. What kind of heart do you have to make sure you are giving to somebody and meeting somebody's need? We've got to learn how to trust God to meet every last one of our needs. Let's actively begin to trust God this week. I guarantee you, you're going to run into a situation where the faith you say you have in God it's going to be put to the test. And you're going to have to learn to trust him for something that you probably haven't had to trust him before, which means you're going to have to actively do something that's going to make a change in your life and a change in the life of who you need. What a blessing! Because we know God wants to bless us. Amen! Amen! And amen. I want to thank you for watching this video. I pray that you were blessed by it that it encourages you to have a deeper relationship with God, that you continue to fight the good fight of faith and grow strong and courageous in your daily battles with the enemy. I encourage you to subscribe to our page, like us on Facebook, and log on to our website. There you can submit a prayer request and support this ministry through a financial gift. And remember, if each one can reach one, and a reached one can reach one, then a one one will have one one, and the kingdom will have been advanced one soul at a time. Thank you, and have a great day.